the Minnesota Fighting Vikings hired Kevin O'Connell to be their head coach last offseason. A lot of people didn't know what was going to happen. He, he was the hot new name du jour, offensive-minded head coach. He just won a Super Bowl uh, as the OC of the Rams. But could he be his own guy? Could he step out of Sean McVay's shadow? Uh, even though O'Connell's 6'5", and McVay's literally like 5'2", at Ed Sheeran. And replacing Mike Zimmer, who is more of a hard-ass, old-school defensive guy. Kevin O'Connell seemed to be the polar opposite in a lot of ways. And how was it going to work? But it did. Uh, frankly, I, I do think that Kevin O'Connell's first season with new GM Quasi Dofamensa was a, an absolute success. You could say, like, well, how could it be a success to lose the playoffs? You, we'll get into it. So th- there's some good and there's some bad and there's some whatever about Kevin O'Connell's first season at the helm of the Minnesota Fight Vikings. Overall, I think that there's a lot of positives. Uh, we're going to go through the sweet and the sour because that's what I do. That's right, man. First up, number one, culture change. So. A lot of players talked about, maybe not in so many words, about how they just love being in the building, how they love being around each other, how they hung out together away from the facility. And uh, that is certainly a departure of what had been happening the last couple of years. And uh, Eric Hendricks, Brian O'Neill is talking about it. And basically every single player talks about how they loved being in the building, how they love the energy. And I do think that that it is a more modern uh, approach uh, to leadership. Kevin O'Connell, uh, you know, leading with praise and you know, criticizing in public. Uh, I think that O'Connell's positivity, uh, it, it is a little Ted Lasso-ish, but I think it certainly is effective, especially uh, with some of the younger players. And I think overall it was a positive. I think it's one of the reasons why, I mean, the Vikings did better in close games this season, 11-0 in single-score games where uh, they dug deep, they were playing for each other, and just that positive attitude is like, hey, we can come back, or hey, we can close this out. Uh, I think that certainly uh, all is a part of it. And next up, number two, 13 wins. So the team was 8-9 last year. The team hadn't been to the playoffs uh, since 2019, and it was impressive. You know, the way that the Vikings got things done, even though, yeah, you could say whatever, fluky playing over their skis, uh, even with that defense just being ass, thank you, but the Vikings were able to get it done. And there is skill. There, there is an art to com- uh, that comes with winning close games where you're able to make better decisions in high leverage spots than your opponents. Uh, and it does come down uh, where, where you do end up on top. Uh, so the Vikings, you know, stringing together seven straight wins in the middle of the season. Uh, although stepping up in some big time games, yeah, 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 we'll talk about that. But, you know, 13 wins uh, in your first year as a head coach obviously is a big time uh, get. Next up, number three, won the division. I mean, that is every team's goal at the start of the year. It's like, no, every team's goal is to win the Super Bowl. No, oh, it's a it's a process. Your first goal is to win the division, take care of the other three jabronis in your division, and come out on top, and you're guaranteed to have a home game, which – I know, didn't, didn't quite work out for the Vikings, but it is what it is. But that is the first goal. And the Vikings – I mean, they ran away with this thing. Uh, they were able to seal the division uh, and, and have a 4-2 and two record in division, so that's important. And I think the Vikings, I mean, in the first year of Kevin O'Connell, that is a huge win. Next up, number four. Especially since the Bears said that, this, hey, Ryan Poles, hey, we're going to take back the Dorth and not give it back. Get best of luck. Uh, the Vikings also got the best of Kirk Cousins, where, uh, I'll say it again, Kirk Cousins had the best year of his career. And may not may not be like stats wise or touchdown interception ratio wise, but Kirk Cousins did the damn thing under a lot of duress, and I think that him and Kevin O'Connell are going to be a nice combination for the next couple of years. Now, should I think the Vikings should go out and find their quarterback of the future as well? Yes, I think you can do both things at the same time. I think you can walk and chew gum. Uh, uh, lastly, sweet Jefferson wide receiver one. Even though <sighs> playoff game maybe not so much, but Kevin O'Connell showed a lot of ways that he can scheme. Justin Jefferson open, get him the football, get him off of press coverage, use him in creative ways. Now, O'Connell definitely got away from those things at, at some points during the season. It's almost like he can script Jefferson the ball, but then he just forgets about it in game. It's, a, it's actually kind of weird, but you know, Jefferson led the league in receptions. He led the league in yards, had an outside chance at uh, both of those records uh, until the last couple games of the season. So, I mean, Jefferson uh, being established as a wide receiver one in the league. Awesome, man. And a bona fide MVP candidate. The Sour. So I'm going to say culture change, where did they make it a little bit too soft, right? Because, I mean, football is still football, and you need a little bit of an edge. And, yeah, the whole Ted Lasso kumbaya thing is fantastic to a degree, but I don't know. Like, did it ultimately cost the Vikings uh, going up against some of the tougher teams in the league? 
I, I don't know. It's all speculation. Uh, but of course, everything is a dichotomy. Everything is both good. Everything is both bad. But overall, the culture change, I think, is a net positive. Next up, number two, not firing Donatel. Like I said, it was been a, it's was been a massive disrespect to every single person involved in that organization. You knew you should have fired Donatel at the bye. You knew you should have fired Donatel after the Patriots game where you had the mini bye. You should have certainly fired him after the Lions game, but you didn't. Uh, and then you got that performance uh, in the playoffs. You're going to like the way we play. Nope, not, not so much. And I actually do think that Kevin O'Connell, I'm worried because we're still waiting on to hear about the fate of Ed Donatel, but I'm a little bit worried that Kevin O'Connell might be too nice. Like, he might be too deferential. He might be too... I don't know, confrontation averse to make a decision here with Donatel because it, it's it was evidence that something needed to be done on that defense, and he didn't do it, and he's the head coach of the entire team, not just the offensive coordinator with a challenge flag, which is a complete reversal from Zimmer. And the downfall of Zimmer is his uh, lack or ability to be involved with the other side of the ball that isn't his. And Kevin O'Connell, maybe he delegated too much of the defense or – you know, gave too much trust to Donatel, where they, they didn't make the changes that were needed. And Kevin O'Connell, is he going to make the changes that are needed this offseason? I don't know. Uh, sour number three, short yardage plays. Um, um, all right, so short yardage plays. We, we saw in the Buffalo game, we saw in the playoff game, we saw in uh, a number of games this year where, hey, if, if it's third and inches or fourth and inches, uh, O'Connell's going shotgun or is going to do something completely weird or out, out, outside the box, but uh, outside the box in not a good way. It's just kind of frustrating where the Vikings left a lot of meat on the bone this season, uh, where they could, could have put games away if they were able to get an inch or a yard, which is familiar to a couple of other games this season. But I think that O'Connell, the thing I like about him is that he takes ownership of his mistakes and he seems to learn from them. So I think that self-scouting this offseason, he's really going to take a look at uh, that section of the playbook and hopefully fully revamp it. Next up, number four, big time games. All right. So it's great to win 13 games. It's hard to win a game in this league. But you look at the Philly game, you look at the Cowboys game, you look at the Lions game, you look at the Packers game. And of course, you look at the playoff game. A couple of no calls, no shows uh, mixed in there. And I, I think that the Vikings certainly had a couple issues with emotional hangovers. You know, the emotional hangover of being the Packers week one and then Philly. And then the hangover of the Bills and then playing the Cowboys. And then uh, the Jets win last second uh, and then versus the Lions. And then the Giants win on Christmas Eve and then you got the Packers. So I think there's a clear pattern. And it's something that Kevin O'Connell has to work on. And maybe it, it does go back to why the culture change is a sour where he needs to be like, hey, we need to refocus as opposed to just celebrating ourselves and around in a circle. We, we need to get back on this thing. We need to win some big-time games. And, like, going through, I mean, besides the Bills game, what was the signature win this year? I don't know, Packers week one, I guess? Yeah, but uh, I think the, if the Vikings want to be the best, they got to beat the best, and I think o O'Connell has to focus on that. And lastly, number five, the final play call. <laughs> So you know, we've discussed this at, at length where it's fourth and eight. Give Cousins better options. Uh, KJ wasn't breaking open. You had two deep routes and you had two checkdowns. Like there was nobody at the six. So I don't know. It, it's something that it, it's something that comes with experience. I mean, you, you look at Andy Reid calling plays in big time spots and he's got those huevos and cojones. You look at Doug Peterson uh, as well. And I mean, O'Connell, it just wasn't a good play call. And it was poorly executed by everyone uh, involved, and it just sort of is what it is. But like I said, this is going to be a learning experience, and O'Connell near one, it was a success. But now you have to build upon it. I mean, 13-4 and four and winning the division is great, but if you can't build and expand upon it, I mean, it, it was a waste. It, it really was. So now tear down and rebuild this defense, uh, keep the offense top dog, and just go from there, man. Just go from there. But overall, I, I will give Kevin O'Connell an A uh, for his rookie debut. I think he should be uh, in the Coach of the Year conversation. But I don't know. Can't wait to see what year two, the sequel, uh, is going to be. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, looking at the sweet and sour of Kevin O'Connell year one as head coach of the Vikings. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.